Now, this isn't really the kind of story we'd normally do, but it is absolutely fascinating. One of those wild ideas that take off and sweep around the world. It all began with a documentary that claimed the astronauts never ever landed on the moon, that the whole event was faked by the Americans, filmed on a movie set. Normally you'd just dismiss this as another of those crazy conspiracy theories, but then you find that 20% of Americans, that's like 60 million people, actually believe there's something in it, that the giant leap for mankind could have been the hoax of the century. Some say it was the greatest achievement of the 20th century. And looking back, it was truly amazing. Apollo 11 was a major propaganda victory for America and a major boost to national confidence. So much so that more and more people around the world now believe it was a giant confidence trick. Not one astronaut has been on the moon. I'm afraid not. No Apollo ever nope. landed on the moon. It's all a lie. I'm afraid so. The government lies. What a surprise. Bart Sabrell is a documentary filmmaker, a committed Christian, and a man obsessed. He and his disciples believe all the Apollo moon landings were a conspiracy on a massive scale. While some may say to deny the moon landings would be tantamount to denying the Holocaust, we have to realize that there were 300 million eyewitnesses to World War II, but to this supposed greatest event in human history, there were only three witnesses, each government employees, and there was no independent press coverage of this event. And all that we saw was a fuzzy black and white television picture. Houston, you should have a picture now. We have a pretty good picture now. Now, if you think you've heard all this before, you could be right. Back in 1978, Hollywood made a movie called Capricorn One. Ready, slow mo. Houston, I'm stepping onto the surface. Take slow mo. The movie was about a mission to Mars, but the landing was staged, secretly filmed on a movie set. The conspiracy theorists reckon if Hollywood could fake it, so could NASA. I was rolling on the moon one day. They say this famous image of the astronauts planting the American flag on the moon actually happened in an air-conditioned studio. And that's why the flag is flapping. We all know there's no wind on the moon. You can look at the footage yourself and it certainly looks to me like the flag is either alive or there's wind. I believe it was air conditioning because of the heat be because of the natural or artificial lighting that they had, as well as the fact that they're in spacesuits without cooling units. And according to Bart Sabrell, there's more proof it was all a hoax. If the astronauts were really on the moon, there would be only one source of light, the sun, and therefore only one light making all the shadows. It's 20 times brighter than the desert on Earth. There's no artificial lighting, no need for it. All shadows will run parallel. Sometimes we have two objects in a picture just a few feet from one another, and the shadows are going as much as 90 degrees different direction. Now that's circumstantial evidence of artificial lighting. If it was all faked, there were some tricky problems for the hoaxes. For instance, how to fake the effect of the moon's gravity. Ah, that's easy, says Bart Sabrell. Slow motion. Look at the size of that rock! When we take the traditional television picture as seen by NASA, it's very convincing. They seem to be kind of floating around and it looks like one sixth gravity. But all you have to do as a filmmaker is to double the speed and it's very clear that they're on Earth. They're not jumping six feet in the air, they're getting a few inches off of the ground. It just, it's silly. If you actually watch these things and speed up the film, it doesn't look natural. These guys are hopping around and they're out of balance. Phil Plate is an astronomer at Sonoma State University in California. As far as he's concerned, Bart Sabrell is just plain crazy. If it was all faked on a movie set, why didn't the director just go for a second take when he saw the flag waving? 
What's really going on is in the airless environment of the moon, the astronauts have stuck a pole into the lunar surface and they're twisting it. And as they're twisting it, the flag is flapping. You don't need air to do that. It's very easy to show that you don't need air to do it. It's just the inertia of the cloth. It's just the flag flapping because material moves when you shake it. And as for the shadows allegedly made by the studio lights. Well, that's wrong and it's easy to show wrong. You can go out uh, on an evening where the sun is low and shadows are long and just look at a, a row of trees or a fence post and if you look at them you'll see that the shadows don't look parallel it's just perspective and that's all you're seeing in these images where the shadows look like they're going in different directions it's simply due to perspective. Sabrell claims that if the astronauts did travel to the moon they would have passed through the Van Allen belt of radiation that surrounds the earth. The early belief of scientists was that the Van Allen belt would be deadly to human travelers, but later research showed it might not be so harmful. The experts believe that it's not lethal simply because they believe the astronauts went through it. I've interviewed them. They're my age and they say, well, we know that the belts aren't lethal because the astronauts went through them to the moon and back, therefore they can't be hazardous to your health. And that's their logic as to why the belts are not lethal. So what does NASA say about all this? At their headquarters in Houston, there's a museum for the mighty Saturn rockets that took the Apollo missions to the moon. Well, that's if you believe they did go to the moon. James Oberg is an unofficial spokesman for NASA. Unofficial because, apart from a brief press release, NASA has never made a detailed reply to the conspiracy theorists. I think NASA feels that it's almost beneath their dignity. It gives more credibility to the stories to respond to them. It left the people out there who wondered about these things saying, aha, they, they can't answer these questions. It actually made the conspiracy theories stronger. According to Bart Sabrell, NASA faked the moon landing not once, but six times. And apparently, despite the thousands of NASA staff involved in the Apollo missions, not one of them has ever confessed to the fraud of the century. How many people do you think know about this hoax? The President knew, the Joint Chiefs of Staff knew, the President's closest staff knew, and then of course the people who photographed the false scenes knew. But we're talking potentially fewer than a hundred people knowing that the moon landings were fraudulent. That's amazing. Well it is amazing because you're saying every astronaut is a liar. Well, <laughs> Every single one of them. Uh, yeah, they lied. Bart Sabrell's theories may be far-fetched, even crazy, but at least they don't involve little green men in flying saucers. It seems, though, when it comes to anything to do with outer space, many Americans believe their government is guilty of a conspiracy of science. This is Roswell Air Force Base in New Mexico, which became famous for the so-called Roswell Incident. It was 1947, and at first, an official army release announced a crash landing by a flying saucer. But then pressure was put on witnesses, and a new official announcement proclaimed it was nothing more than a weather balloon. A cover-up for sure, said the conspiracy theorists. Today, Roswell's most popular attraction is the UFO Museum, where clearly no one is letting the facts get in the way of a good story. Do you believe Roswell saw an alien craft? Did something land at Roswell in 47? I don't discount it. Richard Hoagland is another conspiracy theorist, but unlike Bart Sabrell, he can claim some scientific credentials. Of course the Apollo astronauts went to the moon, he says, but the big conspiracy is what they found there. It's an extraordinary universe we live in. I have real data on real NASA pictures with real pedigrees that say that there are ruins out there that we have not been told about. 
Let's face it, you could argue that's Donald Duck in these grainy, out-of-focus NASA photos. But Richard Hoagland sees the ruins of an ancient civilization. He says all the world's religions would be proved false if the truth of these pictures was revealed. And that's why the astronauts have been silenced. I think they saw the ruins of an extraordinary ancient civilization and technology. But what did they look like? Built primarily of glass, an extraordinarily battered and ancient decayed set of ruins. You believe that what we see in those pictures is glass, a glass structure? It's ruined glass. It's been battered by meteor meteoritic bombardment for millions of years. NASA, we can prove, has lied about what's on these pictures. If they've lied about this, what else have they been concealing in the way of specifics? I have no doubt that many people have called you stark, raving mad. OK. So? Would that be right? No. It's not <laughs> Nobody's ever said to you... Oh, no, of course they have. You but, are absolutely bonkers. But so what? If you walked on the moon, we're given the opportunity to swear to God that you walked on the moon. As for Bart Zabrell, he's now at work on a new documentary. This time, his technique is to ambush astronauts wherever he can find them, produce a Bible, and ask them to swear that they really did go to the moon. Why don't you swear on the Bible that you walked on the moon? Here's what happened when he met Buzz Aldrin, the national hero who most rational people believe was the second man to walk on the moon. Calling the kettle black, if I ever thought of it. Saying Will I misrepresented myself. Get away from me. You're a coward and a liar and a thief. Did you get that on camera? Now, of course, Mr. Sabrell, who could have said, oh, your punching me is clearly an indication of your suppressed guilt, uh, which would have made his point, maybe. But instead, he turns to the camera and says, did you get that? I think that's a pretty good indication of where he's coming from. Go to Bart Sabrell's website, and you'll find out how to buy a copy of his documentary. And there's no shortage of customers, which makes you wonder, is he just in it for the money, or is he just plain nuts? Sure, it's an uphill battle. They, they faked going to the moon. They did it all in a studio. I mean, of course it sounds nutty. That's one of the things working in their favor. Has it affected you personally? Has it been difficult to convince people you're not a nutter? <laughs> hey, I, you know, my philosophy is uh, we're all insane and that some of us get caught and some of us don't. <laughs> and you haven't been caught yet, perhaps. Not yet. Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our extra minute segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.